It it's is real breakfast, breakfast hours. hours. Eat breakfast to view up. Today's, Today's breakfast, breakfast is, is. I had a spinach omelet with Parmesan cheese and a delicious berry smoothie. I also had a berry smoothie and a spinach omelet, but mine also had bacon and cheddar cheese. Hello. Welcome. It's real breakfast hours. Eat breakfast if you want. <laughs> okay, so this is new, but I thought it would be fun if we did like a podcast in the mornings on Saturdays where we just get to talk about, you know, the week and different news things that we thought were interesting um, and do some little activities together and then you can come along and watch us while you eat breakfast. Should be exciting. Maybe we'll upload this like Sunday morning so you could eat it with tomorrow's breakfast or watch it with tomorrow's breakfast, I suppose. Yes. So, I know we each have different things that we prepared or at least thought, okay, this would be good to talk about. I know there's not really much preparation, but um, like, what do you, what do you have for us? Uh, a couple of things and you're right, prepared might be a strong word, <laughs> yeah. but uh, a couple of things, notable things happened today, at least the stuff that I care about. Things like um, the Demar Hamlin thing on uh, the football game this yeah. past week. Demar Hamlin, we both had this on our list because yes. obviously it was crazy. We were playing video games instead of watching the game when it happened, and then when we finished, Mike was like, "Oh, I want to finish watching the game," and then of course it was postponed, and that was crazy. Yeah, I was expecting to come in on like after halftime and watch the second half of the game, but uh, well, I guess for those who don't know, football. Obviously, it's football season. Uh, this past week in the Bills-Bengals game, Bills safety Damar Hamlin uh, made a tackle. And when he did that, uh, the Bengals player who he tackled, his shoulder pad hit him right in the chest. Completely normal. It was a good tackle. Damar Hamlin went down, and then he stood back up. When he stood back up, he like took a breath, and then immediately fell back down to the ground. And they had to stop the game. They were doing CPR for almost five minutes, I believe. They had to use um, an AED mm-hmm. on him, and eventually he was rushed to the hospital. Um, and if you want to tell them a little bit about why something like that might have happened. Yeah, so, I mean, you might have already heard about this if you follow football news at all, um, or if you're in the medical world because i think this is pretty big news especially for people interested in sports medicine um obviously we don't know for sure what happened yet um i believe it was ruled cardiac arrest well yes cardiac arrest but what caused it i don't think we really know yet at least i don't i i've been looking into it and i haven't really seen any reports that say for sure like what it was that caused the cardiac arrest um but a pretty uh solid i guess theory and what i believe it probably was um there is this condition called commotio cordis um which you get an abnormal heart rhythm uh after getting hit with something in the chest directly over the heart at like a very specific time um during your heart's rhythm in the heartbeat um it's like just that pinpoint moment and the right place to get hit and then you go into cardiac arrest um, because it would put you into ventricular fibrillation which is just not a good heart rhythm to be in that often leads to cardiac arrest Um, and this has happened like in other sports like Like I think hockey and stuff Um, and the way the fact that the other guy's head did hit his chest it definitely seems pretty likely that that is what happened Um, of course there have been other people online who say things like... Well, just just different opinions. <laughs> uh, no no need to get too specific with it, but people have different ideas of what could have happened. And, uh, you know, technically maybe it's possible, but uh, more likely than not, it was just it was the commotion cordis, or at least that's, that's what we believe. Um, and it has happened in other sports, like hockey and baseball specifically, because uh, the puck, like a slap shot to the chest, can cause that. Um, if you're like the pitcher and the guy hits the ball and it hits you right in the chest, this could, it could cause that. It's uh, usually just like a high uh, impact type of event. Um, though in Damar Hamlin's case, he did go to the hospital. I believe they were in Cincinnati. So we went to one of the Cincinnati hospitals. Um, and for a couple of days there, people were pretty concerned about what might happen to him. 
A lot of thoughts and prayers are going out to him and his family and to their teams. But as of the time of recording this video, he is speaking again. They were able to take his uh, assisted breathing apparatus out of his mouth. He, uh, he can write, so he's speaking and writing, so his motion centers, or language centers, excuse me, seem to be reasonably intact. So uh, hopefully there's very minimal, if any, uh, brain damage, and uh, long term he hopefully will be okay. Yeah, and I did read that like he's FaceTimed his like teammates and things like that, so things seem to be going good. Um, I don't think there probably wasn't too much brain damage because they were able to start CPR so quickly and it sounds like they were able to get his heart back not in not too much time that there was too much damage to his brain. Did you uh, hear what the first thing he said was when they when he woke up? Yeah, did we win or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he, had, won? he asked who won the game yeah. and uh, I guess the doctors told him you won the game of life. <laughs> yeah. Which, that's cute and all, but I don't think that's what he was looking at <laughs> No, but kind of true. I mean, that's pretty lucky. Definitely. Very scary. Something that I've been seeing a lot on TikTok is about how the University of Idaho murder that happened. Basically, there's these University of Idaho students. Um, I think they were pretty much all involved in Greek life. Um, but basically, they go out on this Saturday night November 12th and then they come back home um, and basically like someone broke into their house between like or at least the they police had believed that the murders happened between 4 and 4 25 a.m. There's four that were killed actually and then there was two others that survived. Um, so there's Ethan Chapin so he's a guy and I think the other three were all girls um, and they were just they were living in like you know, like how people get like a house apartment. Um, I think that's what it was. There's all sorts of like pictures online that you can see of the house. And basically like everyone on TikTok was very curious about this whole situation, especially before we found out who did it because there was so many like weird elements to it. And the fact that like two of the roommates that were there were not killed. Um, so people were saying like, oh, you know, did someone they know plan it and like they killed the other ones and then just obviously wouldn't kill the ones that they liked. We didn't know what the situation was. Which in a way is like really bad because you get a lot of people, TikTok has this really bad trend of just spewing all this like conjecture, conjecture and then people like literally go out and attack the people even though there's no evidence that like they did something. Um, so it's like really not great because everyone thinks like they act like it's a game and it's like no actually there was a real murder so it's like not good um and maybe don't talk about things you don't know as if you know them like i think it's fine if you're just like well it could be this but you can't act like you know it's this and people act like oh he definitely did it it's like well you can't really say that anyways um but some of the new things that were found out is that one of the surviving um, roommates, she said she had woken up um, like around 4 a.m. and she thought she heard one of her other roommates like playing with her dog. And then she thought someone, she heard another roommate say like, there's someone here. Um, and they're all like drunk, or at least she's definitely drunk because they had gone out that night. Mm -hmm. um, and she says she looks out her bedroom, the one that survived, she says she looked out of her bedroom, I think her name's Dylan, um, she looked out of her bedroom and she didn't see anything. Um, and then she opened it a second time because she thought she heard crying coming from another roommate's room. And then she heard like a male voice say like, it's okay, I'm going to help you. So we don't know what that's about. Um, and then she opened her door again and she saw a man in black clothes and a mask that walked past her and she just like stood frozen in shock because like yeah I'd be pretty freaked out if I just saw some guy I didn't know. Yeah and she said she didn't recognize him um, and he, but she, he had like bushy eyebrows I guess. And... Judging a murderer's appearance? Basically it sounds like that he like leaves the place and she went back to her room and she locked her door and then she went to bed um because she was probably really scared 
and then he actually does from what they saw on his the murderers um like phone and gps stuff that like he actually did go back to the house that morning because um one of the big things is apparently he left like a knife sheath at the house which i think is part of how they were able to figure out it was him oh so they caught the guy oh yeah they caught him um because they had like they were tracking his car um because there's like records of him being at that house like four other times before the murder so basically he was like stalking them or like scoping it out or something um i don't know if we know why he did it but yeah they were stabbed like the victims were stabbed multiple times all of them it says oh here we go his phone was near the victim's house 12 times before the murders oh so he was definitely uh premeditating that one no yeah so like there's no getting out of that um and also like he literally broke into their house or at least went in their house maybe it didn't break in but it's not your house so you're not supposed to be there i uh not to interrupt but i see in the side there of your uh screen because you're you know grabbing some information to make sure that everything you say is as accurate as can be of course it looks like the cops pulled the guy over without realizing it uh, maybe a couple days in advance yeah for driving too closely to another vehicle yeah it's so crazy to that stuff like happens so frequently you know, if you'll watch like a documentary or something on a murderer or serial killer or whatnot almost it feels like across the board these people have had encounters with the police in the past like i don't know what about being a murderer makes you bad at driving but it happens i guess um and actually i did there was a video of like i think it must have been the police officers like body cam stopping them and there's like a video i saw it on tiktok or something um of him stopping them and being like hey you were too close to the yeah, that's what I was just talking the about. but like his dad was in the car with him during that and you can tell like he's trying not to give too much away because what they were really doing was like literally going across state lines but his dad is just like oh yeah we're going out to i don't know like somewhere and like they were their 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 stories were not lining up basically i see his dad was because obviously his dad doesn't know and he's just like being like yeah hey officer like he has no reason to lie but secretly his son killed people so it's just crazy wacky Um, stuff is he in custody right now Oh, yeah. Um, and another thing is that the, he had one of those, I guess, like, when you're in jail, sometimes they'll put you in this, like, bodysuit thing so, like, that you can't, like, tear it and you can't, like, hang yourself or something. Right. Like that. A lot of uh, people in custody will attempt to kill themselves. So they, like, take your shoelaces, they take your belt, they give you clothes that you can't rip. That sort of thing. Yeah. So there's, like, a picture of him in one of those pairs of clothes. And apparently they're, like, really cold. Um, Because you don't get, like, a blanket either when you have that on. Because obviously they don't want you to kill yourself with that either. So, I just thought that was crazy. Um, Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's the (laughs) stop. That that picture is funny. His dad is like, oh, hi, officer. And then the driver over there is visibly unsettled. No, literally. Like, you can kind of tell in the video that it's it's like... like Patrick Bateman. It looks... He looks like, um... Uh, the guy from Nightcrawler? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lou something. Uh, I can't. That was a good movie, though. I definitely like that movie. But it's funny, those like Sigma male movies are usually pretty good movies, but not for that reason. You can see this is the picture of him. Oh, he does look. Oh, yeah. It's like. It looks like it's almost made out of uh, like oven mitts. Yeah, it like, really does. Like stuff you might not burn yourself with. Yeah, it's supposed to be stuff that, like, you can't, um, tear. But I don't know if we have, other than that, it was obviously premeditated. I We don't really have, like, why he did it yet, as far yeah, as I can tell. Um, and of course, there's gonna be, like, a really big case that, like, gonna go to trial and everything like that. So, we probably won't hear anything about motive and stuff or from his point of view until the trial because I assume whatever lawyer he gets is gonna want him to not say anything until the trial. It's true, yeah. Uh, any murderers out there, don't talk. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> That's awful. <laughs> maybe, maybe talk if you kill uh, someone. You know what? Don't kill people. Yeah. <laughs> um, or should we say unalive? Don't, yeah, do not unalive mm -hmm. anybody. A sorry, YouTube algorithm. I know you don't like bad, naughty words. Especially, got to make sure we don't curse in this podcast. I, uh, I feel like I curse a bit more than you do. But the YouTube rules changed recently. Yeah. And I'm not like a big YouTuber or anything. You can probably tell by, by uh, this video here. But I've heard, read a little bit myself that the rules are very uh, are vague. Or at least the wording of the document seems straightforward. But the way that it's been enforced thus far has been pretty um, different across. Like it's not the same across the board. Everybody's experiencing it a little bit differently. Uh, some people, or at least the document itself says that you're not supposed to curse in the first 30 seconds or so of the video. Uh, other people are cursing, you know, five, ten minutes in and still being uh, demonetized for it. And there are certain swear words that used to be like on a higher tier of foul language. You know, you could like you could say. Uh, you know, small four-letter words, uh, less impactful ones, and get away with it. But you can't be dropping like the F word or anything like that on, on like a YouTube kids video, for example. But now it feels like everything is a YouTube kids video where uh, all these curse words are like the same level of uh, bad as far as YouTube is concerned, and you can get demonetized for any of them. Yeah, it kind of sucks that, and obviously we're uploading this to YouTube, but it really does kind of suck that uh, YouTube is such like basically a monopoly for video services um, for like just anyone to use. And obviously like TikTok doesn't do the long form videos and it's just like the vertical view. So it's a lot different than YouTube videos, uh, which you can have more long form content. You could do podcasts like this, um, pretty much anything you want on YouTube. But since they're like the big name of like video sharing stuff, um, they make all these rules and advertising stuff and it's just like really not for the best of like the content or the creators or the viewers it's just what makes them money yeah or like if youtube made a rule tomorrow that said you can't wear hats in their videos what are you gonna do about it where where are you gonna upload your content i i really don't know i don't know the answer to that question you could stream on twitch but twitch one has its own selection of issues and two, uh, streaming is one thing, but if you're like uploading edited content, you that's really not the platform for that. No. Um, so that it's really sad because I feel like YouTube really had this like golden age almost early on, like in the 2010s before like the adpocalypse stuff, you know. <laughs> um, and then. It feels like every so often YouTube just like sanitizes itself more and more being like, okay, now you can't say this and now you can't say this and now you really can't say this. And it's just like, what is the point? Like, yes, there are kids that watch YouTube videos, but like we already have the function on YouTube that you can say this is made for kids or it is not made for kids. Um, it's not really fair to punish everyone just because like there might be some kids on like just make a like if you want to have it so clean and sanitized like make a different platform for kids to watch or something i don't know like so many brilliant creators shouldn't feel like they are being censored just for what either kids being around or advertisers not liking like swearing like i don't know i just find it hard to believe I would find it particularly hard to believe that advertisers had an issue with, um, you know, sexual, particularly sexual content or violence or cursing because if you're Nike or Coca-Cola or, you know, some of these big, like the biggest companies in the market that are going to advertise Amazon, they advertise over like TV. You know, if, I, if I'm watching cable, I, nobody has cable anymore. Uh, if I'm watching Hulu's live TV, I could be watching any number of things. I could be watching Freddy Krueger kill people. And Freddy Krueger is like literally a kid toucher, right? But right. I, I could watch a kid toucher murder people. Uh, and then there'll be Amazon and Coca-Cola and like Nike commercials in between. But God forbid somebody says the F word on their Minecraft gaming video. Well, our advertisers aren't going to like that. No. 
And like, I kind of can see the, okay, not in the first 10 seconds, but even that is just like, but what's the point, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I think just let people make the content they want to make. And if people like don't want to do sponsorships with them, like that's one thing, but like, I just find it hard to believe that, okay, one person does this thing. So now what these advertisers are pulling out all together. I feel like in our generation, no one even really watches like normal television anymore like we literally just watch at least for me like i'm not watching like clicking through channels on my tv if i'm watching stuff i'm either watching on streaming services or i'm watching on youtube like just youtube videos because i like watching youtube videos you know so it's the advertisers are gonna have to go somewhere <laughs> yeah i remember when uh we were younger or I'm a li slightly older than you, but not by too much. Um, when I was a kid, you used to just have to... What was on TV was what was on TV. If I, and usually I swapped between like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, and Animal Planet. Yeah. Uh, this was... Cartoon Network, I feel like, has always had the edge because they've always had cartoons. But this was at a time when Disney Channel was mostly cartoons also. And um, Nickelodeon didn't have quite as many live action things as they do now. Or... or at least in my estimation, I like the shows better. Um, but it is like strange to point out that Disney does a lot more live action content now. They used to have things like the Hercules TV show, uh, Lilo and Stitch, just to name a couple. But now it's like almost all like live action with like middle school age uh, kids. But anyway, if I didn't want to watch what was on those channels, I kind of just turned the TV off. There was no on demand in 2005. Yeah. But uh, now. I never switch around the channels. I, I need to know what I want to watch. And that's that. Like, if I can't... If I want to watch One Piece, if I want to watch Spongebob, I just go and find it. So. Yeah. So, it's a lot different. And I think it's just getting more and more like that. Because, like, I really don't see the generations below us watching. Like, we don't even watch that, like, real TV anymore. I don't see the, like... Gen Z and whatever's after them. I think Generation Gen Alpha, Alpha or yeah. something. Like, I don't see them going back to normal, like, satellite cable TV, you know? The only, like, live cable television that I really watch is football. Yeah. I watch the NFL and maybe some hockey periodically or, like, basically it's just all sports. If I want to watch sports, it's on regular television, which usually I get through, like, Paramount Plus or... Or Hulu or something like that. Right, so because right. so even I'm, then you're not on like cable. You're going through a streaming service. Right. It, it's a streaming service that behaves like cable in in that sense. But uh, that's like the only time outside of YouTube ads uh, that I'm like getting commercials. If I'm watching Netflix, there's no commercials. If I'm on, um, you for know, now. You know, for, for <laughs> now, for now, until until next year or two years from now, POV is 2025, and you're watching. I don't know, anime on Netflix or something like that. And when it actually fades to black at the 11 minute mark, they really do play you like a Coca-Cola commercial and then it goes back and you have to deal with that every episode. It's just like uh, TV in 2005 where we circle back, full circle. Yeah. Which is really frustrating because it's, it's really just like corporate greed. Like there's literally no other way to put that. Yeah, how dare you share a password? Yes, like you can't share passwords anymore. Like the whole point of people switching to streaming was because we were like, yes, this is convenient that I can look at all this stuff and I don't have to watch ads or at least not as many. Um, and there's so much stuff that I can watch and I can watch at any time. I don't have to wait for the specific time slot. Like I don't have to wait for 8 p.m. for, I don't know, whatever to come on. Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Wizards of Waverly Place was prime time television for me it was <laughs> yeah ben 10 on the oh other my hand God. Um, right, sorry if the angle is slightly different i don't know if it will be um the battery died on the camera so i had to replace it <laughs> um so that meant moving the camera around so if suddenly we are shifted like to the left or right i am so sorry <laughs> just gonna have to deal with it for just now have to deal uh where were we i think the last thing i had said i made some joke about ben 10 being prime time television when i was a kid uh, and that's very true. That was like the earliest that I can remember really caring about like a time slot on television. I was, I think it was 2005 or six or something like that. So I would have been like seven or eight or maybe nine. I don't know. Uh, and I asked my mom 
if I could like stay up late or something like that to watch Ben 10. And she let me, but Ben 10 literally came on at, I'll call it 8 o'clock. It's like 8.02. And the first like intro or whatever had just played. So the show is, is on. And then my mom goes, oh, hey, could you like get me a glass of water? And this was like the first time I ever talked back to her. I said, why don't you get it yourself? <laughs> so I was watching. I was so into the show. She got so mad at me. She like sent me up the stairs. But then like man, I was going to miss the show. But she like stopped me right when I got back up. She's like, come back down. And she let me finish watching the show. But she was very unhappy with me afterward. It was nice that I uh, she let me watch the show. And I definitely shouldn't have said that. But <laughs> boy, I cared very deeply yeah. about watching that show. How old were you? I had just said like seven or eight. Seven or eight, yeah. I mean, it's true. Like that's so that stuff is so important to you when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you might act out because you don't want to not. I don't know. But that was nice of your mom to let you finish right. it. Right. It's like a simple thing. Like yes, I could have just I could have very quickly gotten her a glass of water and come and sit back down. But I was I was glued. Yeah. Another thing we could talk about is the Henry Cavill stuff. Oh yes. Okay. That's. Yes. So, uh, Henry Cavill, great actor. Um, he plays some characters that I'm very, or I guess played some characters that I care very much about. Um, characters like Superman, one of, if not the, like, most iconic, I, I would actually even, I'm gonna put my foot down, the most iconic comic book character, superhero of all time, Superman, of course. Everybody knows Superman. He was playing him in the DC movies, uh, but he's out now. He, he even came back. He was gone from the movies for a couple of years after like the most recent Justice League or something with the whole Schneider cut debacle. But he's gone and then he proudly makes his return in a, spoiler alert, post credit scene of Black Adam. Yep. Which I was very excited about. I was texting my friends. I was in a frenzy. I was, she was there. Yes. I was like, Henry Cavill's back! Because he's such a great Superman. The, the movies that he's been in were not perfect. I'd even call some of them mid to bad. However, he was a phenomenal Superman. He looked like the character. He played the character well. And you could tell that he cared. And after his little 30 second cameo at the end of Black Adam, they got James Gunn on, the guy from the Suicide Squad and the um, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I guess he's in charge of DC now. And he's cleaning house. He like fired everybody, including Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill made an I'm Back post and then, like, two weeks later, had to make a, it's over, bros, post. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they, they said, we're so back, but we're, it's over, bros. <laughs> it's over. And just like that. And then this was about in between that time, he comes back as Superman. A week passes. And he says, oh, and I'm out of The Witcher. He leaves The Witcher in what many of us consider to be a massive blow to the show. Because we care very much about uh, him playing Geralt. She did such a good job as Carol. He, yeah, the say what you want about the show, how faithful it is to the source material, even if it's good or not, whether you enjoyed it or not. Henry Cavill was phenomenal as Geralt of Rivia. Him leaving as Geralt really deteriorated or detracted from our desire to see season three. I don't know if we'll watch it. Maybe we will without him. But uh, anyway, so he, he's back as Superman. He's out as Geralt. You know, a soul for a soul or whatever, right? A quill in exchange. But then a week after that, he's gone as Superman. So we're like, Henry Cavill is just out. And he made this big long tweet or whatever about how much he cared about the source material. And I even saw one woman who worked on the set of, she met him on the directing staff of The Witcher. She made like a twit longer about how she didn't get along with Henry Cavill. But she like couldn't say any like buzzwords about him she didn't say he was like any ists or phobes or, or like a, a bad person or anything she just said that like he didn't vibe with her or whatever and was very um adamant about the source material which to me seems like a good thing um but so we're like reeling from that and then do you want to tell them the the good thing that came after well this is almost embarrassing to say that this is a good thing but not really but uh basically there's this series of whatever you want to call it there's books games models you don't gotta beat around the bush okay, but okay. Just say it. <laughs> uh warhammer warhammer 40k warhammer 40k uh he's making a show for it right yes he's going to be executive producing and starring in an upcoming warhammer 40k show on amazon which 
she, I've been into for, you know, a year or two now, and um, she's been getting into we uh, the last couple of months. She saw a little lightly, sort of foot in the door, foraying into the, the space. Yeah, um, I like... I guess, okay, so I'm like kind of a nosy person. <laughs> So I just like hearing things. I like knowing things. Um, so he'll read stuff or play video games or whatever. And it's lore, right? Like Skyrim lore. Like what is going on in Skyrim? Or in this case, Warhammer. He's telling me the backstories of all these things. And I just listen to it because I like to know what's going on. And, you know, some of it is genuinely interesting. Um, so I always say, like, tell me the lore. Or we watch lore videos like Major Kill and um, yeah, shout out to Major 40K Kill. Theories, I think. Yeah, Major Kill and 40K Theories. Are the two channels. If you're new to Warhammer, if you're if you've heard about the Henry Cavill news or uh, Warhammer Dark Tide game just came out. Unfortunately, I don't have it because it's Xbox only. Uh, hurts my little heart. Actually, I think it's on PC too, but I'm a PlayStation guy. But regardless, if you've heard of Warhammer or if you're just hearing about it now. A great way to get into it there's two YouTube channels 40k theories and major kill I don't know either of those people personally but shout out to them yeah and I know like it's funny like I guess Warhammer we're obviously American um, or I guess we could be Canadian but we're American um, what are you talking about <laughs> ew, what was that it's my very best Canadian accent that's not good it's awful oh it's on purpose God. it's bad instantly any Canadian person that potentially watches this gone I know one Canadian and I hope she didn't like that <laughs> Oh my god. It's like um, we just watched Knives Out and Glass Onion. Oh, yes. Daniel Craig's southern accent is awful. He sounds like <laughs> Foghorn and Leghorn. <laughs> okay, but anyways, like Warhammer is, I guess, British or something. I don't know. It, yes, they're, they're um, British. But a lot of like British people and then Major Kill is like Australian. So like British Empire people like it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it is good. Uh, but yeah, if you see, if you watch those videos and you're like, wow, these, oh, why is every Warhammer YouTuber like British or Australian? Like, that's why. That's why yeah. <laughs> Games Workshop is their like parent company and they're uh, based in the UK. Um, but yeah, and something Major Kill always does that I like, he, he's always like, what? He, what does he say? Good day, like guys and gal. Yeah, and gal, like singular. And I'm always like, that's me. Yeah. I'm um, yeah. the gal. He posted his <laughs> analytics the other day because I think he was... You know, he was talking about Henry Cavill, actually. He posted a video talking about the Henry Cavill news, uh, much in the same way that we are now. And he was saying that, uh, I'm not sure if, some, some of you are probably aware of this, but uh, Rings of Power was on Amazon recently, the same place that the 40K show was going to be. Uh, Rings of Power actually has like an all-female directing staff. Um, and Major Kill was saying that he really hopes that that's not true for 40K, because, and then he showed his analytics of people who watch his channel, and it was a ninety-eight point four percent male audience. And he's like, "This is a male space. I like when girls watch my videos. I like when girls are into the hobby, but it's almost a hundred percent dudes. It's a sausage fest. And you know who, uh, between women and men, it's more likely that men are going to like capture the, like the male attention span when writing this show. So." You know, you definitely should have some ladies on there, but, like, you know, your lead director probably should be somebody who, like, is into the hobby and the yeah. guy. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, honestly, to me, it's not even about, like, if there are men or women that are, like, in the directing space. It's honestly, when it's an adaptation, it should be more, okay, who actually knows about this and who cares about it and wants to do it ju justice? Because so many adaptations nowadays, they just do what's popular, what they think is going to make the most money, get the most people to watch. Which is obviously important when you're in like a business setting, but also like you can just make your own original thing if you want to do that. You know, you don't have to take something that people love and really enjoy and like ruin it with a bad adaptation um, because you think this will make it more popular. Like there's plenty of fans. Maybe it's not going to be the most popular thing, but there are fans. And even if like you don't have to change it for people who don't know this series to enjoy it, like people might still watch it and then that have never done anything Warhammer and then be interested and that might get them into like Warhammer stuff. So to me, it's just ridiculous. Like we have so many bad adaptations of books and games and all this stuff because 
Hollywood, whatever. Like, right. they just treat it like a business and they just treat it like the big cash grab and they don't care about the source material and they don't care about the viewers or like the actual story that is originally told. And it's like so frustrating. Right, because if you're a Hollywood executive, you uh, have an IP, you have a property, something like Warhammer, something like Lord of the Rings or you know, Invincible or something like that, you know, Iron Man. You have this property and you want to make a movie about it, but you're not making this movie because you love Iron Man. You're making this movie because you think it'll make you some money. So you, as, you know, a Hollywood executive, it behooves you to hire a cast of directors and staff and uh, actors who will make you money. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to hire a group of people who actually care about the product because if you hire a bunch of people who want to cater to general audiences, that's fine and good, but you ri- you run the risk of alienating the core fan base of that product. If you are making a Warhammer show, you should, as an executive, in my opinion, be catering more towards the fans because if you follow the source material, there's like already a group of people that care deeply about this product. And if you make them a product that cares about them, they're going to watch it, they're going to enjoy it, they're going to recommend it to their friends. If you make something that's like bland and middle of the road, that's like to cater to the common man, the general audiences, you're going to miss a lot of uh, what captured those people initially the the flair of the series that got its like core fan base might be missing from whatever product you produce and so you're just going to alienate that like the actual audience of people that are going to want to spend money on your product like somebody who watches a bunch of nascar for example might not care about warhammer 40k so why are you making a movie for him yeah and it's just like how many bad adaptations do we know of? Like, there's so many. Like, the Percy Jackson movies. Like, <laughs> the fan base hates them. And, like, people that didn't even read them don't like them either because they're just, like, not that good. It's like, you would have been better off just making a genuinely, like, good adaptation. Like, there's no reason to not... I get, like, having to cut some things because, you know, obviously you might not have enough time in the frame of a movie to include everything that is in... Uh, what like 300 page book or something like that you know like we get that and your fan the fans will get that as long as you would keep the important stuff and there, what you do have in there is genuinely like part of the story or if you change things they are with in the lines of like this is still believable in this universe and doesn't like screw up things later on that we know happen for example um, like there's just ways to do it that are very respectful of the source material and the fans and there are all ways that are just awful <laughs> right like uh, something made that property popular enough that you feel the need to make a movie about it you, you really need to make sure that you're keeping whatever that was whatever that flair is that you know Avatar The Last Airbender for example uh, kind of an older show at this point but everybody's seen it you know a lot of people have seen it uh, people love it. The fans are diehard fans. They, M. Night Shyamalan made a movie adaptation of it years ago. That was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. The, they pronounced all the character names wrong. The bending system was not interesting. There's a scene where... Or, there's a scene where they had like a whole team of earthbenders to levitate a rock this big at like two miles an hour. Yeah. Something that like... In the show, an earthbender could, like, sneeze, and that might occur at 100 miles an hour by mistake. But, so the bending was weak, the character names were bad, uh, and they really, really, like, sped through it. They were doing, like, book two and three things in this hour and a half movie. Yeah. Didn't make any sense. The pacing was wrong, the characters were bad, the bending was uninteresting. Everything that was good about the original was absent from that uh, product. So people hated it, and they still talk about, we're talking about it right now, that it's bad. Yeah. So if you make a bad adaptation, people will talk about it for a long time. And I just like, I don't know, maybe they don't have like souls or morals or something. But like, wouldn't you be embarrassed to make, (laughs) like, you think you'd be embarrassed to like make that bad of an adaptation? Like why, like, just don't buy the IP or whatever to begin with if you're gonna do that. Like either make a good adaptation or don't touch it. (laughs) Right. A lot of it I think is, it's of course money. We all know it's money, but it's somebody in Hollywood or, you know, wherever says oh 
Ninja Turtles. The kids like that. Maybe we can do something with that. And like that's the extent of their interest in the product. And they're like, the person they're speaking to goes, oh, okay, I'll get somebody on that. And then they pick a big name Hollywood director or something, someone like M. Night Shyamalan, who actually makes some movies I quite like. Um, Signs, for example, great film. <laughs> uh, the Happening, not quite as good, but still entertaining. <laughs> but a guy who doesn't care about the product tells guy who doesn't care about the product to hire another guy who doesn't care about the product and then you make a movie that's nothing like the original source and so then nobody likes it yeah which is why we are very excited and hopeful that henry cavill is in charge of this uh warhammer thing because he literally doesn't he like literally paint models he does he, um, <laughs> uh yeah his issue with like superman and the witcher was that yes he was a lead actor but he was not on the directing or uh, production staff in any capacity it was just i'm your star and here's what i want but then your director doesn't have to listen to you they say that's great henry but here's what i need you to do and they hand you the script and that's the end of it so he walked he left but now that he's executive producing the warhammer series uh he gets to make those decisions he's a big nerd he's uh he's been in interviews it's always weird for me to hear him with a british accent because so, i'm so used to him being superman and Geralt. but um he's british uh games workshop's british he talked about how he paints uh they're called custodians they're little golden guys all of the models are pretty small they're like this big but he paints them he reads the books he plays the games uh, so he should be very I know he's very excited to be on the production team and starring in it hopefully they do uh, something a little more grounded I, I don't want them to start too crazy um, I'd like to see it evolve into something crazy but you gotta plant your feet first yeah okay so that was a good talk about that <laughs> um, I think I'll bring up one more thing, uh, which is just going to be quick, and then I think we should go on to our, what were we doing, the sorting hat quiz today? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, so, this is not like a plug or whatever. I mean, I guess it is, but like not- We've plugged like four other things. Yeah, we've plugged so many things. Okay, so this book is called, I don't know if you can see it. It's lifted a little bit. Um, It's called The Acid Watcher Diet. It's a 28-day reflux prevention and healing program by Jonathan Aviv. I hope I'm saying that right. I assume I am. Um, he's a doctor, obviously. Um, basically, I am in medical school, which is a lot of stress. And la my first semester, um, part of the way through, I started getting acid reflux symptoms like every day. And acid reflux is something that I've always like every so often gotten. Um, but I think in the past year, it's really been more of a like more consistent thing. Like I used to just get it every so often for like a night and then I'd be good for weeks to months, you know, um, when I was little, but like recently from poor diet and lack of exercise and stress and all, all the bad things, <laughs> um, I was having really bad acid reflux and it was getting to the point that I was getting concerned because I was also getting these other symptoms. Um, and we had been sick, um, and I started getting this like weird cough and I didn't know if it was from like, we had COVID for a period. Um, like a week. Yeah, we had COVID for a week. And then like for a month or two after, like every so often I would just like get the urge to cough. Like obviously I was like fine, but then I would just get to cough. And I was like, okay, I don't know if this is from the acid reflux or if it's from like long COVID stuff. Cause like otherwise I felt fine. But every so often I would just be like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you get that feeling in your throat. Um, and there are like other symptoms of acid reflux that like you wouldn't think about like okay abdominal bloating a chronic nagging cough or sore throat post nasal drip a feeling of a lump in the back of your throat allergies or shortness of breath like there are things that are not classic acid reflux symptoms that you can get that are signs that there is damage in your esophagus and like your throat from reflux and I was like, I gotta, I gotta change something because it was getting bad. And I was taking Tums like every night. It's true. Um, and it's not fun. It hurts. Um, so I bought two books. I bought this one and another one, which I haven't even looked at because I started reading this and I just found it really interesting um, and really helpful. And so 
what I had said was that for January, I was going to do this 28 day reflux prevention program. Um, and I started it this week and so far I've been sticking to it, which is kind of, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I don't know. Like I am such a foodie person and I really like unhealthy foods. <laughs> like I love fried foods. I love salty things and all these, like, you know, sometimes I feel like if I could just eat like fries and pasta every day, I would, right? <laughs> like constantly going between like Taco Bell and McDonald's and stuff like I don't know like I just really like food and those things taste really good but they're not good for you and obviously you can have them in moderation but if you have the damage like this is really to just like let my body heal itself basically and then after you do like two weeks to like a month of a maintenance phase where you let in more food but you still don't do some things and then afterwards, you can either stick with the maintenance phase, like, kind of meals and things and recommendations, or you can go back to eating how you did before. Obviously, I don't think I'm gonna, I think it would be a waste to just completely, like, abandon all this, like, healthy journey, I guess, that I've started. Especially, like, once I get to, what, like, a month and a half or two months, maybe, like, it doesn't make sense to me to just like go back and then what i'm gonna have to do this whole process again like an in another six months when it comes back um so i'm i mean i'm excited about it it kind it's hard like you know i was complaining last night about <laughs> craving things i really for some i'm usually not a sweets person but i was really craving chocolate last night um and you can't have chocolate with this because of the caffeine in it um, Emma, I was eating chocolate right in front of her. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been mostly good at, with it, but he does still, he has things that I can't have. Like he had bacon in his omelet today <laughs> and it smelled really good, but I can't have that. Normally um, I would offer her some, but uh, it, I can't. I want to, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did kind of yell at him to not offer me things because I have very low self-control. So if he starts offering stuff to me, I'm not going to be able to say no. I'm very bad about, well, rather, I feel like the opposite is usually true, that I'm very good about wanting to share with her. If I have a cup of coffee, I'm like, oh, you want a sip? If I have, I, I feel like maybe it's more than necessary where I'm like, oh, I have a beer. I know you don't like beer. Have a sip. <laughs> yeah, and I literally would be like, no, I don't want it. And he'll be like, come on, have a sip. It's like peer pressuring me. It's like yeah. bad. I'm like, stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having her uh, build a flavor palette. She's, it, you know what? It's working though because like two years ago, anything like beer or coffee that I gave her, she'd be like, Bleh. it just tastes like beer. It just tastes like coffee. But now if I hand her a beer or something, she's like, I can taste the, the blueberry in it. I still don't like it, but I can taste it. So she might not like it, but her palate is definitely improving. Yeah. Um, so that, that was this week um i guess i'll say some maybe favorite things that i've had so far because there's like certain recipes in here uh i honestly think that like one of my favorite things i made was the first day i started it for lunch i made this um it was like a chicken pesto sandwich on whole wheat of course because of course it's a diet you have to have whole wheat um i put it i have like a panini press i put it in the panini press and oh my god it was so good it was like a warm sandwich the mozzarella in it like melted a little bit it was good like it didn't taste like diet food you know mm -hmm. it tasted just good like i was like dang i would get this at like a restaurant or something um so that was a, definitely a favorite um we i made this fish um you made, you made fish twice. You made fish. Yeah, last but the night. first one. Was there a was there a vegetable with it or was it like literally broccoli? Just, I think. Oh yeah, I think it was like broccoli and this halibut or no, it was supposed to be halibut, but I couldn't find it, so I got haddock, which I think is pretty similar. Um, and it was like it's supposed to be this like white miso agave marinated fish, but I didn't have that. So instead, I just used um, the liquid aminos, which is like a soy sauce substitute that is like I'm supposed to use from this. So I just used that with some agave, blue agave nectar. And I put that together and I marinated the fish and I baked it in the oven. 
and it was so good it didn't even taste fishy um because i'm not i don't really like fishy flavored fish i guess you know i like more when it doesn't have that much of a fish flavor um it was good i mean i wish i had gotten more we were it, it was a little bit of a small portion but it was good it was definitely good there was uh good diet food and bad diet food but uh, i was uh, definitely on the top end of yeah. that spectrum there what, what was your favorite that i made because of course i've been making it for dinner because i cook dinner um so he is partially <laughs> doing the diet with me yes uh it's like i'm being held hostage by her diet but that's okay uh because i don't want to cook so um my favorite thing that you've made is probably that the second fish entree that you made uh, i don't know night. if it was last night yeah I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, but you made fish. Uh, I can't remember what kind it was, though. It was tilapia. Very, tilapia, and it was very good. It was the tilapia and, like, sweet potato fries, which I don't really care for sweet potatoes, but the fries were good, um, but not nearly as good as the fish. The tilapia was very good. Good. Um, yeah, it was, like, it was supposed to be, like, healthy fish and chips, basically, which, to me, that was a bit of a stretch because there wasn't any breading or anything. I mean, I put some... Uh, breadcrumbs on them because I thought like that would make it closer to a fish and chips for me um, but then they didn't really like cook the way I wanted to so I kind of scraped them off anyways um, but it's pretty good so what's next yeah what do we got what do we got next you want to do the Harry Potter thing first yeah. question which of the following would you most hate people to call you and the options are ordinary, ignorant, cowardly, and selfish. Do we want to say our answers out loud? Yeah. I'm going to go with cowardly. I go with ignorant. Some of these I might go back and change because it's like, that's a hard one to answer. No. Ordinary also hurts you my soul. You have to send it. Okay. After you have died, what would you most like people to do when they hear your name? Miss you but smile ask for more stories about your adventures think with admiration of your achievements I don't care what people think of me after I'm dead it's what they think of me while I'm alive that counts uh, I'm gonna go with think with admiration of your achievements yeah I think I agree I think I was saying that too okay. given the choice would you rather invent a potion that would guarantee you glory wisdom love or power go with glory on that one I think I wanna go with power how would you like to be known to history? The wise, the good, the bold, or the great? Gotta go with the great. Great, yeah. You enter an enchanted garden. What would you be most curious to examine first? The silver-leafed tree bearing golden apples, the fat red toadstools that appear to be talking to each other, the bubbling pool in the depths of which something luminous is swirling, the statue of an old wizard with a strangely twinkling eye. I think I'm going with the pool. I'm gonna go with the silver leaf tree bearing golden apples. Yeah, that's probably like the second one I would have gone with. <laughs> what kind of instrument most pleases your ear? Violin, drums, piano, or trumpet? Oh, this is so hard because like I like all of them. Yeah. And it depends on my mood. It depends on what kind of music I'm listening to. But if I was like in an empty room with somebody playing one instrument, one of those instruments, uh, I guess I might go with drums. I like the drums. I feel like. Okay, I love piano. I play piano. I've always wanted to play violin. I always wanted to learn, but I never did. Um, and then, you know I love trumpet solos and songs. It's like, gets me. A trumpet me. solo does go hard um, in the right song, even by itself. But I think I'm going to go with violin, just because, like, there's something special about violins to me. I don't know. Oh. Four boxes are placed before you. Which would you try and open? The small tortoise shell box embellished with gold inside which some small creature seems to be squeaking. The gleaming jet black box with a silver locking key marked with a mysterious rune that you know to be the mark of Merlin. The ornate golden casket standing on clawed feet whose inscription warns that both secret knowledge and unbearable temptation lie within. Or the small pewter box, unassuming and plain, with a scratched message upon it that reads, I open only for the worthy. Gotta be the I only open for the worthy box. Um, Trying to draw Excalibur for real. This is hard. Um, I don't know. I like the I only open for the worthy, but I also like... 
the golden casket? That's kind of crazy. You gotta just send it. You gotta go for one. He told me not to I know, I know. second guess myself too much. Okay. Uh, I think I'm worthy, so I think I'm gonna go for that one. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Four goblets are placed before you. Which would you choose to drink? The foaming, frothing, silvery liquid that sparkles as though containing ground diamonds. The smooth, thick, richly purple drink that gives off a delicious smell of chocolate and plums. The golden liquid so bright that it hurts the eye and which makes sunspots dance around, uh, dance all around the room. The mysterious black liquid that gleams like ink and gives off fumes that make you see strange visions. Going with the golden liquid. I'm gonna go with the silver liquid. Once every century, the flutterby bush produces flowers that adapt their scent to attract the unwary. If it lured you, it would smell of a crackling log fire, fresh parchment, home, or the sea. Big the sea on that one. I think maybe the fire. Although home would be maybe too, yeah. A troll has gone berserk in the headmaster's study at Hogwarts. Is about to smash, crush, and tear several irreplaceable items and uh, treasures, including a cure for dragon pox, which the headmaster has nearly perfected. Student records going back a thousand years and a mysterious handwritten book full of strange runes believed to have belonged to Merlin. In which order would you rescue these objects from the Trolls Club if you could? Uh, I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's the fine. It's just you rank them in order. So for me, I would do the cure, the book, and then the records. I'd probably do the book, the cure, and then the records, because maybe the book, like, can help us get back to the cure. Let me see. Which would you rather be? Trusted, liked, imitated, praised, envied, or feared? It's a typo one, feared. Yes. Um, I think praised. Uh, I'm going to envied. <laughs> Which of the following do you find most difficult to deal with? Hunger, cold, loneliness, boredom, or being ignored. Ooh. Easily being ignored. Yeah. It makes me very upset when people ignore me. I hate being lonely, but being ignored, being is, ignored is like lonely, but intentional. Right. Like <laughs> when you're alone in your house, nobody's ignoring you. But if you're in your house with other people and nobody's paying attention to you, you're like lonely, but also. And the battery died. Um, I guess these batteries are not really good for like long videos um they last like 25 minutes each maybe yeah but it's okay we're almost done here uh not quite uh we're there's 29 questions oh, well wow. we're on 13 okay um i believe it's is it me your turn? yeah what are you most looking forward to learning at hogwarts um oh this one is split up into two apparently there's like a bunch of different answers uh, and they can only have six answers per uh, question on this. So the options are every area of magic that I can, apparition and disapparition, being able to materialize and dematerialize at will, transfiguration, turning one object into another object, flying on a broomstick, hexes and jinxes, all about magical creatures and how to be friends slash care for them, or secrets about the castle. I feel like this is a silly question. You kind of just answer every area of magic that I can. And then yep. for the follow up, you press none of the above. Yes, definitely. Uh, number 15, Burger King Foot Lettuce. If you could have any power, which would you choose? Reading minds, invisibility, superhuman strength, talking to animals, changing the past, or changing your appearance? Easily superhuman strength. I'm going to change your appearance at will. Understandable. I was like, we got another two-parter here. Okay. Uh, which of the following would you most... Wait, what the... Oh, okay. Would you most like to study in, it's like, different animals? Um, centaurs, goblins, merpeople, ghosts, vampires, werewolves, or trolls? Definitely merpeople. Definitely werewolves. So you go for none of the above on one of them. Werewolves on the other. All right. One of your housemates has cheated in a Hogwarts exam by using a self-spelling quill. Now, he has come to top of the class in charms, beating you into second place. Professor Flitwick is suspicious of what had happened. He draws you to one side after his lesson and asks you whether or not your classmate used a forbidden quill. What do you do? Lie and say you don't know, but help hope somebody else tells the professor. Tell the professor that he ought to ask your classmate and resolve to tell your classmate that if he doesn't tell the truth, you will. Tell the professor the truth. If your classmate is prepared to win by cheating, he deserves to be found out. Also, as you're both in the same house, any points he loses will be regained by you for uh, for coming first in his place. 
He would not wait to be asked to tell a professor the truth. If you knew that somebody was cheating, you would have told the teacher already. I'm gonna go with tell the professor that he had better ask my classmate. Yeah, because I feel like you gotta give them the chance to like come clean first, and then if they don't, then be like, okay, yeah. yeah. Like I'm not, I don't want to snitch necessarily, but I also am not gonna lie to protect you in this scenario. Yeah. So uh, you should talk to the man himself. You and two friends need to cross a bridge guarded by a river troll who insists on fighting one of you before he will let all of you pass. Do you attempt to confuse the troll into letting all three of you pass without fighting? Suggest drawing lots to decide which of you will fight. Suggest that all three of you should fight without telling the troll or volunteer to fight. I would confuse the troll. I think we gotta gank the troll. Just jump him. Jump him. <laughs> <laughs> which road tempts you most? The wide, sunny, grassy lane... The narrow, dark, lantern-lit alley, twisting, leaf-strewn path through the woods, or the cobbled street lined with ancient buildings? I think the cobbled street. Maybe go with the narrow, dark, lantern-lit alley. That was, like, my second choice. There's definitely something Although, down there. Although, there's, they're all, like, I would want to walk down them. Which nightmare would frighten you most? Standing on top of something very high and realizing suddenly that there are no hand or footholds, nor any barrier to stop you from falling... An eye at the keyhole of the dark windowless room in which you are locked, waking up to find that neither your friends nor your family have any idea who you are, or being forced to speak in such a silly voice that hardly anyone can understand you and everyone laughs at you. Gotta go with my friends and family forgetting who I am. Yeah, no, that's like genuinely a nightmare. Yeah, it's That's bad. awful. <laughs> Late at night, walking alone down the street, you hear a peculiar cry that you believe to have a magical source. Do you... Proceed with caution, keeping one hand on your concealed wand and an eye out for any disturbance. Draw your wand and try to discover the source of the noise. Draw your wand and stand your ground. Withdraw into the shadows and await developments while mentally reviewing the most appropriate defensive and offensive spells should trouble occur. Mm -hmm. uh, probably proceed with caution. One hand on the gat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I would do. A muggle confronts you and says that they are sure you are a witch or a wizard. Do you ask what makes them think so, agree and ask whether they'd like a free sample of a chink, agree and walk away, leading them to wonder whether you are bluffing, tell them that you are worried about their mental health and offer to call a doctor? Hmm. I'm gonna go with agree and walk away. Yeah, I was gonna say that one sounds like you for sure. <laughs> oh, um, gaslighting that would be funny too. <laughs> yeah. I know, I was thinking about either... I think I'm just going to ask them why they think that, but I kind of... I do like the... <laughs> I'm worried about your mental health. Like, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> you sound crazy. <laughs> do you know how crazy you sound right now? Dawn or dusk? I think dawn. I'm going to go with dusk. Moon or stars? This one's so hard. Stars. Yeah, I think I'll go with stars. Forest or river? I'm going to go with the river. Yeah. Uh, maybe forest. I don't know. That's hard. Black or white? I'll go with white. Uh, I'll go with white. Heads or tails? I'm gonna go tails. Left or right? Gotta go right. right. Oh, here we go. Yeah, time to submit. Yep, I got Ravenclaw. <laughs> yeah, look at this. I got 70% Slytherin, 68% Gryffindor. Yeah, I got 84% Ravenclaw, 64% Gryffindor, 62 Slytherin, 34 Hufflepuff. My Hufflepuff was 52 in Ravenclaw. I'd also just like to point out that the trending quizzes on the side, the first one is, do I have daddy issues? <laughs> Where do you see that? Oh. Is there trending ones on mine? Oh yeah, trending quizzes, do I have daddy issues? <laughs> Sheesh, what is the first letter of my soulmate's name? Man, sometimes I see these ones and they're like, Am I gay? And I'm like, bro, if you're taking an am I gay quiz. You just might be. <laughs> yeah, you really gotta evaluate. And that's pretty much it for our first episode of Real Breakfast Hours. Um, I'll put on the screen, but basically I have an Instagram. Um, it's at Mickey Dash or underscore Gervais. Hold on. Well, probably edit in the uh, her yes, handle on the both. screen. It's at Mickey underscore Gervais. Um, if you DM me, it should be open, or at least you should be able to request to send me something. Um, send me your, or send us your pictures of your breakfast, and you might get featured on the next episode. Um, also, if you want to send a DM, uh, well, maybe 
questions or, we could answer. Yeah, questions we can like answer. Um, also, you can leave them in the comments below if you want advice or just something you want us to talk about or answer. Uh, any ideas you have for the next episode, whatever you want to see, definitely comment down below or send me messages on Instagram. Um, yeah. Also, uh, real quick plug, me and some of my other friends have a YouTube channel uh, and a TikTok, actually. But the, uh, the YouTube channel is Battle Dome. We do a lot of uh, comic books, anime cartoons, uh, like power scaling type stuff. It's very nerdy, but uh, it's fun content. Um, you might want to go give that one a look. And then uh, let me check what the TikTok is called. I, I never use TikTok except to help my other friends make TikToks. Um, and the name of... Oh, God. The name of that is Big Battle Dome, at Big Battle Dome, and then YouTube is just Battle Dome. So give us a follow on both of those. Follow our Instagram. Uh, send us your breakfast, so maybe we can either review or even roast your breakfast if you uh, have a bad diet. Yep. But Subscribe to this channel. Yeah. Smash that like Smash button. Smash that like button. We will hopefully be doing this every week. Well, hopefully. We'll hopefully. see how we'll see how this does. Maybe we can upload on uh, Sundays. I think I said that before. Yeah. I record on Saturdays. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. See ya. I don't actually have anything against Ben Gates other than I don't like his face for some reason. If you're gonna murder this out, I'm gonna grab more coffee. Murder yeah. This out. Murder this out. I'm gonna specifically not murder that out though. <laughs>